What's up, Eleanor? Oh, here they all come. Look at the big guy come through here. Whoa. Hey, what's up, big guy? You're not going to do any sniffing, are you? <laughs> that time of the year. Golly, that's got to hurt. It hurts me to watch that. And I don't have an udder. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Raising these American bison. Right here. Locally grown, locally raised bison in southern Oklahoma. I'm back down here with the Big Joe herd. My big herd. I've got seven females. The big stud here, Big Joe. Our seven-year-old bull got five calves down here i've got two bull calves and three heifer calves the flies are terrible right now it's been really dry here the past month and a half or so but we got just a little bit of rain a little bit of moisture and what comes with that is it's like somebody opened opened up the world to the flies and so the flies just come running when that moisture hits and we've got some rain coming in the next couple of days so I'm gonna do a little bit of fly preventive today. I'm gonna to do something I've never done. I'm, I'm gonna to try to spray the big guy here with uh, uh, some Prolate Lintox. It's a concentrate that I have mixed up for uh, with water. Oh man, pushing away them calves from the mamas so he can uh, breed them. So I'm gonna to try to squirt some directly on some of these bison. They're not gonna like it. I don't know how he'll react. Last year I did that to Dunbar and he, uh, he freaked out. It was pretty funny that he's just a character, so he's fine. He needs it. So I'm going to try to spray them while they're up here right now. I'm going to throw them some cubes first so I can kind of get their attention and do that. And then I'm going to go out in the pasture and actually put out some diatomaceous earth. I've used seven dust before and I kind of, I, I didn't, I don't know if it worked that well, but I want to pull back and, and use some other products. A lot of you guys mentioned diatomaceous earth. Uh, putting on their bison wallers and so I'm gonna do that try to slow down some of these flies so I can spread that out wherever their bison wallers are at they always go to that same spot super dusty they've got the ground beat out they'll go back to that and roll in it and dust in it and that's to try to get the flies off them well, Eleanor she's Eleanor that's hay I'm talking about this right now and Eleanor's rolling around in the hay so uh, they'll go back and they'll sit those wallers while well, you can spread some of that diatomaceous earth and they hit it and they roll on it and hopefully that's just a direct contact right there. Not gonna like this. What the heck? This is how this always goes. It never works whenever I need it to. Got it. This is not the first time. You gotta be kidding me. This is flat out embarrassing. I brought this down here, pumped it up, did all this, and now it won't even shoot out. Hey guys, come back. Ladies.
Sorry. You know, sometimes you got to plan and you get everything set up, but there's one thing that you forget to try. This sucker fails me all the time. And you know what? It doesn't matter what kind of pump you get. There's, these pumps always just suck, but that is direct contact right there. Once I finally got this sucker going, it can shoot pretty darn far. Once you get it to pump, took a couple of minutes. By that time, they already backed off some, but I mean, I sprayed the heck out of Big Joe. He didn't even care. And I noticed the difference that they're not swarming around him near as bad. See right here. I know she doesn't like it at all. But there's a, she's wallering out there right now. But you can get this thing to shoot pretty far. Anything to keep it off of them and that's direct contact that's just having them up here but see she's in doing a bison waller right now so i'm going to go out there and actually put some of this diatomaceous earth on there so that because they all roll around she's going over there rolling the hay because i sprayed the crap out of her oh here comes our here comes our beauty i'm gonna go ahead and spray her too she doesn't care you're going to talk about a chained up situation right here. You take no chances when you're working bison. Especially during breeding season. You never know. Things could get a little crazy.
that just got pretty uh, interesting and exciting all in one. <laughs> it's like whenever I came over here, um, it was like they all flocked to me, of course, because they see the, they know that when I'm out here with the green machine, they know there's good things coming. But when I came over here, it was like, oh, this is territorial. Don't come near this. And I started spraying this diatomaceous earth out and they all started rolling in it and getting excited and whatnot. And we've got some hormones going at bell star was peeing and and rolling in it too and then big joe roller back into it so a lot of fun stuff happening out here i'm glad i'm by myself in this i know it's dangerous what i do and i try to keep close attention to what i do anyways i'm gonna try to spread some more of this out and uh oh here comes our sweetie hey eleanor you don't have many flies on you today help you out some all right, this stuff is messy though. I'm not sure what's going on, but I got these at the feed store and I don't know where they get them from, but they come in these little sacks. I don't know if hard times right now or what, but uh, yeah, this will do though. It's long as it serves its purpose. All right, I'm gonna get out of your way. Really need that patch right here. Okay, buddy. Ooh, features. All right, hey, you're getting way too close. All right, I'm out of. I'm getting out of here. All right, I'll leave. Your call. I see a waller, 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 waller. I'm gonna try to spread this out before they get back to me. Really, no great way to do it, especially in the sack, but. To always keep them in front of you. Go ahead and put one more here. It looks like they like to go. I'm up here on top of the ATV. This stuff, bad part about it is it gets everywhere. But you can kind of see four areas here where they hit quite a bit. There's one right here, another one. But they like this. This is really dry over here right now. They've grazed this down pretty good. They're able to rotate over here. But you can see the four spots I got going here. Spread all this out. They'll be rolling in it and stuff. But I think it's a little bit safer than seven dust. Maybe not as hazardous. You can still use seven dust, but I've heard from quite a few people you can use uh, diatomaceous earth. Just from me spraying Big Joe, I can already tell the flies have gone away. Now, what I'd have to do, and from her too as well, it's called Paul. What I'd have to do is I'd have to come out here at least once a week to do that sort of application as far as keeping these flies off of them. Uh, that's a lot of direct application. It doesn't always work that way, but having feed, they're able to come up and you can get some, uh, you can apply it to them. 
there's other ways to prevent these flies. There's rubs out there. There's there's like some serious nice rubs you can put out in the pasture. There's some cattle people that do dips. We, we're not gonna do that bison, no. These are just easy, cheap ways that I can do it by spraying them with a bottle. That Prolate Lintox is not very expensive. You just mix it with water. And then here, setting up just on their wallers that they're gonna hit several times daily. And they're gonna hit all of these more than likely. That's just an easy way to do it. And it's cheap with that diatomaceous earth. We'll see how it goes. We may look out here and see some white uh, all over our bison, but that's okay. We wanna try to slow down the flies. And I literally can already tell the ones that I sprayed, they don't have those big hordes of horn flies. They're actually, they're just horn flies. Uh, they, they're not as bad as they were, which is good. Hey guys, thank you for watching. A little exciting, a little dangerous. Hey, it's part of Cross Timbers Bison. <laughs> uh, you never know what you're gonna get out here. I promise you that. So thank you guys. Something I did want to share with you that I thought about when I was out here. We're gonna, uh, like I told you, my wife and I are getting into another side of the bison business, the meat side of this, which is why we have so many bison today, is because of the healthy meat that these awesome animals provide. Stay tuned with that. I'm gonna be taking some animals up to a processing plant in Oklahoma. I'm gonna be taking three bulls to get processed. These animals, guys, are not the animals that you've seen very much at all. Matter of fact, you haven't seen hardly any. I didn't give them names, I didn't raise them, I purchased them from someone else. They're not any of my home-raised animals, none of these that you've seen, none of the ones that uh, are popular and that you've kept up with. These are uh, just for processing for meat. I'm gonna show you that process of taking them to the plant and all that and just really how all that goes. And then right now, we're trying to get the uh, selling side of it, the business side of it, um, working and operating. And I got some, we've got some exciting stuff coming. So stay tuned for that, guys.